Did you ever dream of making something completely by yourself only to realize later on that you probably severely underestimated everything that could go wrong and then everything not only did go wrong but it seemed like it all went wrong at the exact same time? Well, welcome to my world. If you're new here, hi, my name is Tomasz and together with my, my partner Alias, we decided to do something about the state of the prosumer routers by designing and building our own. We've officially started working on the project in March of 2024 and as of today raised $900,000 of venture capital because hardware development is a very resource intensive and without it we simply wouldn't be able to pull it off. Now. Because I've been on holidays with my family for the good part of July, Aliash is the one that has been taking care of the majority of the things. I've just popped up for an occasional meeting here and there. So for this video, I'm just bringing you the news without taking any of the credit for the work which all goes to Aliash. We have some major updates to cover in this video, but before we get there, let's talk about some smallish stuff first. First, and this is likely not news if you've been paying attention for the past couple of months, the second revision of prototypes is now in production. This time around, we decided to order 26 units, which should be enough for both our internal testing requirements as well as a couple of extra boards which we plan to send out to a couple of fellow YouTubers for an early, mainly hardware focused preview. We expect these 26 units to be completed in the second half of August and barring any serious issues, should be sent out a week or two later because we already have firmware built from the first revision and we don't expect it to change much for the second one, right? Apart from the prototypes, we also started ordering and in some cases also paying for some of the components namely the power supplies, heat sinks, fans and screws. And I'm not talking about the prototypes here, these are full orders for the first batch of the development kits, which means we've ordered 1000 units worth of components. Now, there is one quite significant complication when ordering components that due to my lack of experience, I had no clue existed in the first place and that's shipping. And I'm not talking about shipping out to customers here, but rather shipping all the ingredients towards us so that we can assemble them into a final working product. You see, when you order stuff from Amazon, for example, they already take care of everything for you, but behind the scenes, there's all kind of options that needs to be uh, considered, communicated, and of course paid for. For example, do we ship the stuff with an airplane or do we ship it with a, well, ship, which yes, is much slower, but also of course much cheaper. Then there's a question of who organizes the transport, the seller or the buyer, who declares and pays the duties and so on and so forth. And now multiply this with however many manufacturers work on the components you need and it becomes pretty clear that this is a rather messy and very time consuming endeavor which is why we're very lucky in this regard because Eltec, the EMS company that's manufacturing our PCBs also offered to help us out in this department since they already have all these procedures in place and we can basically rely on them and their processes to take care of this. We'll of course have to pay for it, but with our resources already being, being stretched thin as it is, we decided it's better for us to focus on building the best router we can rather than messing around with logistics, right? And speaking about logistics, Aliash has also been hard at work to develop what are called assembly instructions. As the name suggests, this is a set of documents that describes step by step as to how one should put all the mechanical components together to end up with a fully and correctly assembled device. The end result, I believe, looks absolutely fantastic and it shows the amount of love Aliash has poured into this in my absence. Aliash, fantastic work. Okay, let's now talk about a couple of more significant, or should I say impactful developments, starting with the DDR memories. As you probably know, we're using five two gigabyte DDR4 chips for a total of eight gigabytes, plus one for the ECC functionality. And when we were gathering quotes for them earlier this year, you know, to be able to set the end price for the development kit, we were offered them around $7 and a half per chip that is. And now that we're finally able to actually submit the order, 
11 fucking dollars. That's almost a 50% increase in price in just six months. Now, before you ask, yes, we did try other vendors that manufacture pin compatible chips, namely Alliance Memory and ISSI. And guess what? They are even more expensive. And I wish this was the end of it, but unfortunately it's not. You see, in electronics manufacturing, you're rarely able to get larger quantities of, well, anything just like that, right? Everything comes with what is called a lead time, or to put it differently, how long will it take for the component to be manufactured and shipped to your desired location? And you know when can we expect for the whole batch of 5,000 chips to arrive, which is how much we need for our 1,000 development kits? January 2026. Now, before you click away and cancel your pre-order, there is some good news, and that's the fact that it's not always a black and white scenario. We're talking to our distributors on a weekly basis almost, and what they're trying to do is scrape the bottom of the barrel, which is to say they're asking around whether it's possible to get at least some chips so that we can start the production and ship the first units in end of September or early October. It will likely not be a full batch at once, but the idea is that we get some amount of chips, say enough to produce around 150 to 200 routers, ship them out, then get the chips for the next 200 and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, I don't have any definitive answers at this point yet, but will of course update you uh, all in the upcoming videos as things unfold. I'm not in any kind of panic mode, well, yet, because the distributor told us this is a very likely scenario and because they were fairly confident, I'm also somewhat confident. Cautiously, but still. Now, to give credit where credit is due, they, so our distributor, did warn me earlier this year that DDR4 chips will likely get more expensive and take longer to receive. But the fact of the matter is, we simply didn't have the funds for me to be comfortable enough to order them before we secured the next round of funding, which we did in June. And upon receiving those funds, we immediately submitted the order. Anyway, it's not an ideal scenario, but you have my word, we're all doing everything in our power to get the units produced as fast and as soon as possible. And the most likely and what I believe also the most fair outcome will be that we'll start shipping units in their reservation order. Meaning those of you who submitted your pre-orders first will be able to purchase them first as well, right? This episode is brought to you by PCBWay. I've been working with them on my custom keyboard project and I was super impressed with their speed, quality and price, so I'm more than happy to recommend them to anyone who needs any kind of PCB manufacturing done, whether it's just for a couple of prototypes or if you need a larger production run. Link to their website of course, down in the description. Back to the video. Okay, let's move on to the next component, which is the development kit enclosure. To be honest, I'm super happy with how it turned out design-wise, but this design might need to change depending on th how things unfold in the following month or two. You see, as it is right now and has been for a while, we plan for the development kit enclosure to be CNC milled from a polycarbonate box or brick for a lack of a better word and have an, an acrylic cover. Acrylic, it's a hard word, acrylic cover. Yeah, say that five times in a row. <laughs> anyway, the idea was that the bottom part, which we call the box, would be smoky, semi-transparent black, and the cover would be clear, transparent acrylic, which would make it super easy for the PCB inside the enclosure to be on full display. It's a masterpiece after all. But there are two problems with that. And the first one is that raw polycarbonate blocks, at least those that PCB way can source, not only don't come in a black variant, they also come in a colorless version, which quite honestly isn't really that colorless. It gives out this blue slash light indigo tinge and it is not at all what I had in mind. The second problem is of course the price. Being CNC milled, each enclosure would cost us around $30, which is significantly more expensive than the alternative approach, which is the injection molding, where each unit would cost us around $15, so have that. Now, before you go yelling at me, deservedly so, <laughs> I told you so, you need to know that injection molding isn't without its problems either. The first one being a necessary redesign of the shape of the enclosure. 
You see, in CNC, you have a solid block, a solid block of plastic that you can mill the material out of in any way you want. You're limited only by what the CNC machine can do, right? With injection molding, on the other hand, you have to pay special attention to every single wall and angle to make sure the thickness is consistent throughout all of them. If it's not, the injected plastic with all, will almost certainly bend and twist as uh, it, the plastic cools off in the mold, resulting in a bad product. This would mean that all outer angles would have to be rounded up way more than we initially planned and even the main four walls would likely have to be designed at a 3% angle so that they will be able to come out of the mold itself, right? But on the flip side, injection molding also has other benefits apart from the price, namely that we're then free to choose a variety of different plastics with different opacities, we can choose different surface treatments for each surface independently. And as I said earlier, each enclosure comes at a much cheaper price that will only get cheaper with higher quantities because the price will come down once the mold has been paid off through the first 1000 units. However, and this is important from the timeline perspective, it has to be made. And making the mold takes time, quite a substantial amount actually, because first we have to modify our design to be compatible with injection molding. Then they have to prepare the first iteration, do a couple of shots, send them back to us. Then we have to send back our thoughts and corrections. They do another iteration on them and so on and so forth until we're all satisfied. And according to their experience, this takes around three to four months, which means if we decided to go with injection molding, we're again looking at January 2026, which is way too late for me to be comfortable with it. Now, I do have a plan and I'll explain it shortly, but before I do, we also need to address one final problem that we have not anticipated earlier this year, and that's politics. If you've been following my content for a while, then you know our company is set up in Delaware, but pretty much 100% of the actual operation takes place in Slovenia, which, which is where I live, and in the Netherlands, where Aljas lives. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue, but right now, due to all the things that are going on in the world, the dollar is quite weak in comparison to the euro, which has a very significant impact on the prices of, well, everything, not just electronics. You see, back in January, if I wanted to pay something here in Europe, say 5,000 euros, I'd need to wire roughly $5,000 from our US account because the exchange rate was almost one to one. Today, on the other hand, for the same amount, so 5,000 euros, I have to wire almost $5,800, which is a very significant difference. 16% in fact. Now, luckily, some of the materials we purchase offshore have always been priced in dollars, so it's not actually a 16% increase in prices across the board, but majority of manufacturing and labor costs still takes place in Europe, which means our margins are becoming somewhat uncomfortably slim. They still are there, meaning we'll still turn a small profit on the development kits, but man, do I hate how things are turning out. Sometimes it feels like every goddamn thing is stacked against us succeeding. Luckily, for whatever reason, I seem to thrive under stress, so these problems increase my drive rather than lower it, but still, from time to time I just wish I was a gardener or something, but I guess then I'd have to worry about floods or droughts or whatever, so <laughs> I guess we're all in the same shit, right? Anyway, the plan with the enclosures, at least for the first 1000 units, is to have them CNC milled, which yes, will be more expensive, but it's not really fair for me of me to stretch the timeline just because we didn't do enough homework sooner, which would most likely uh, make us learn all these things months ago, and we would not be in this position that we are now when it comes to the enclosures. Now feel free to rub it in in the comments below. So here's the bottom line. The second revision of prototypes are being manufactured as we speak, and we expect them to be finished in the second half of August. Following that are a couple of weeks of testing to make sure everything behaves according to our specifications, and by the time we're done testing, enough materials should arrive to our EMS partner that they'll be able to produce at least 100 or so units. In the meantime, we'll do our best to get the rest of the components so that we can complete the whole batch of 1000 units and ship them out as soon as possible. 
I'll of course keep you updated every step of the way, so if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to do so by clicking the button below the video. Tomasz from Slovenia, signing out.